because remember the zero is 20. And then, you know, once we irrigate the ML again, we get that, that sort of, that, that flash of blood. And I'm thinking to myself, is this a lateral canal? Is this remaining pulp tissue? Do we need to do some more shaping? So in this case, it, and it transpires that um, it's, it's, it's the wrong thing to do. <sighs> Hello, welcome to this week's uh, clinical case. And, you know, I got a couple of um, uh, comments on a couple of pay, uh, uh, viewers who are saying, let's, let's, could you post some of your mistakes? So this is a kind of a partial mistake uh, with this tooth today. And um, this is a really, really common mistake that you can make and, and it happens to the best of us. And this is essentially a case of going too far and what are the consequences of going too far. But before we get into the case, what I want to say is, you know, over 40 to 50% of the people who watch these videos are not subscribers. So if I could just ask you to do a really, really easy and it's a free thing to do, and that's just subscribe to the channel. And if you subscribe, it uh, supports the channel. Really, really easy thing to do. And I promise, if you do subscribe, each video will get better and better each week. If you want to bring that support even further, we've got a membership program. The membership program has early access to content. So I usually run about three weeks ahead with all my videos. And it also now has exclusive content. We've got a fantastic hour long endodontic access video. So if you become a member, you've got access to that. So we'll move over to the case. So this is a quite young lady. I believe she was 14 in this case. And this is a tooth where uh, the patient had been seen by the referring dentist. Um, they were suffering from a few symptoms from this tooth. And um, uh, the, the, the dentist had accessed this tooth and dressed it uh, with, with Ledimix. And I suppose um, for the eagle-eyed viewers out there or the viewers who watch my videos a lot, I suppose you could argue that this case would have been a great um, case for uh, sort of a, a pulpotomy. Um, but because the, the dentist had treated this tooth and, and dressed it with Ledimix, um, I think in this case it was, it was best to do just a, f a, full, a full root canal. So just reserve your judgment. Um, I also think as well, doing these kind of fancy sort of uh, removal of the pulp uh, chamber and leaving the, the vital uh, uh, canals and, you know, dressing them with biostromic, I think it's 50-50. And sometimes, you know, you get a patient who's so young um, and it's and it's kind of a 50-50 treatment and then you hurt these people. You know, I suppose, in, is that in the best interest of the patient? Although we'd like to keep the vitality of the tooth. So it's a bit of a way up. And we take up the video here of uh, the tooth and, and the, the dressing that's been placed in here is kind of sort of come away. So I think the first instance, what we need to do is we need to place uh, place rubber dam in them. And what I'm doing is I'm placing the rubber dam on with the clamp because I like to use winged clamps. And, and in this case, you know, it, it goes on really, really nicely. Now you've got the rubber dam on there, you have to stretch it over and sometimes that can break the rubber dam. And we just sort of fold a dam over the uh, the... The, the wings here. And then what I do like to do is I like to open up the clamp and give it a little bit of a wiggle to make sure the rubber dam sort of fits around the tooth and it's a bit of a better seal. And in this case, we don't need any kind of liquid dam. And, and this has created a nice seal within the rubber dam. At some, at sometimes I don't like to use liquid dam because it just makes a massive mess, especially if you're using that cut of corking agent rather than light cured stuff. And then I'm just going to remove the last of the temporary filling. And you'll notice with a lot of these temporary fillings is it looks like it like it's come away, but actually it's usually just the sort of top end of it. And then we can see that the referring dentist is is uh, is, is dressed his tooth with cotton wool, rightly or wrongly. Sometimes I feel like it just it's, it looks a bit of a mess. And also you've got to worry about fibres within the root canal space. And we look at the access it needs refinement. So in this case, um, I'm just going to very very quickly uh, clean the prep with an ultrasonic. And then I'm going to use this blunt ended access burr. And the great thing about this is you just put the access burr in, you just sort of whiz it around, you're just whizzing around the, the sort of walls of it, and you can see that the, uh, the, the access cavity looks really, really nice. And then when we look at the, the, uh, the, 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 the canal orifices, we can see that the pulp is partially vital. And my main concern in this case is when they are partially vital is pain. Because a lot of the times, uh, you know, this is a bit, it makes the tooth 
really really hypersensitive to pain so this is why you know on lower teeth i do id blocks and i also do a buccal infiltration but just be really really careful don't get in there really really quickly just have a little feel around because if you get in there with a with a hand file really quickly you might make the patient jump out the chair and then they've, they've lost all kind of um um a trust in you so in this case, I'm going to go straight for a working length check and I'm going to go in uh, the, the mesolingual. And we can see here that I'm just going to um, push the, uh, the, the ham file out of the tooth. So I go past the zero reading and then I back up the, the ham file till I get the zero reading. I'm just going to slightly adjust the stopper here. And sometimes if we adjust the stopper, it can sort of affect the working length. So I'm just going to place the, uh, the apex locator back on just to check we're at the correct zero reading. And then when we pull this ham file out and we check with our measuring uh, uh, block, we can see that the medial lingual is 19.5 or is it? So um, I'm just going to do my uh, glide path shaping. I felt like the ham file went really, really easy to length on this mesolingual, and I'm just going to be shaping it to zero. Again, I'm shaping it to 19.5. That's really, really important. And we you know, use lots and lots of irrigation. And I like to irrigate all of the canal spaces when we're, uh, when, when we're irrigating everything, even if they're not shaped yet. I think it's a really good way of just you know, introducing the hypochlorite and, and, and making sure you're cleaning everything. And then we're going to do our final shaping. And remember, I'm shaping this with a master apical file 25 variable at 19 because it's 0.5 millimeters from our supposed um, working length. And we can see this kind of first flash of blood. And I, I don't think of anything of it because I know the tooth is vital. And then I'm just going to recapitulate. And then just going to do some further shaping with the uh, 25 variable. It's still bleeding despite the fact that we've completed the shaping. And then I'm thinking to myself, you know, this is this is not normal. but. I think in this case, I'm not going to panic. I'm just going to continue to irrigate the tooth and I'm going to move over to the mesial buckle. And then again, um, I place my ham file to length. I put the black apex locator clip on and I get this kind of poor reading. And I don't know what's going on. And then what I do notice is that uh, the black clip it's just been through the autoclave too many times and it's just sort of degraded the, the sort of circuit within it. So what I do is I just remove the black clip, I just replace it with a new one and then when we replace it on, it works really well. It just transpires we're at zero. So it's the same sort of protocol again when we're working, we're doing the working length of the MB. Um, but in this case, I'm going to be really, really careful because the uh, hand file isn't negotiating to the end of the tooth as easy we'd like to. So I'm just going to do a little bit of watch winding. I'm going to make sure I just go out the end of the tooth. And when I do, I'm going to back it up so we get zero. And then that's my proper zero reading. And again, I'm going to just adjust uh, the stopper here. And then once I pull this hand file out, we the are MB. going to check the working length of the MB and it is uh, 20 millimeters. And again, it's the same kind of protocol as before. We're gonna uh, measure our glide path file at 20. We're gonna shape, this is a size 10 high flex glide path file. I'm gonna shape to the zero uh, reading on this tooth. Then we're gonna uh, do lots and lots of irrigation again. More flashes of blood from the ML. Again, I'm really concerned about this. This is quite a lot of blood. And, you know, is this pulp sort of hyperemic? Is it a lateral canal? I'm not entirely sure. Again, I'm just going to continue to uh, shape the MB. I'm going to use a size 25 high flex at 19.5 millimeters this time because, remember, the zero is 20. And then, you know, once we irrigate the ML again, we get that that sort of that, that flash of blood. And I'm thinking to myself, is this a lateral canal? Is this remaining pulp tissue? Do we need to do some more shaping? So in this case, it, and it transpires that um, it's, it's, it's the wrong thing to do, but in this case, I'm going to reshape my mesolingual with a mass table file again at 19 millimeters. And I'm just trying to sort of remove any sort of vital tissue. And then, you know, we do a little bit of irrigation. I think to myself, oh, maybe it's stopped. It looks okay. I, I feel now that I have sorted out this kind of bleeding problem and I'm going to move over to the, 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 the distal aspect. And, you know, we look at the, the canal space and then the bleeding is kind of stopped. Sometimes when you irrigate and, and, the, and the canal space is bleeding, you'll notice this kind of like swirling of blood coming out of the canal orifice. In this case, it isn't. 
I'm gonna check the working length of the distal. Again, I'm gonna use a size 15 this time instead of a 10 because we know that the distal is usually wider and we get a more accurate reading. And then we uh, do the same protocol, you know, it's out the end, bring it back, that's the zero reading. And when we pull the size 15 out, yeah, we can see that the zero reading again is 20. And then it's it's the same protocol. We're gonna shape the uh, glide path file at the zero reading the distal. We can see more bleeding and I'm thinking to myself, what's going on here? So we've shaped uh, the distal canal with our mass apical file. I have a little bit of look and maybe there's this kind of second orifice in the distal. You'll find a lot of distal canals in lower sixes have got a second orifice or sometimes it's just a ribbon shape. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take a hand file. I'm gonna make quite an acute bend in this hand file. And then I'm gonna rake this hand file down uh, the sort of uh, sort of the lingual aspect of this tooth and it it transpires that there isn't a second uh, canal in the distal it's just a sort of a ribbon shaped and you just saw that blood was filling up um, with uh, the mesolingual and again I don't think this is normal I don't think this is extra uh, canal anatomy I feel like if I irrigate this and irrigate this is probably not going to stop bleeding for a while um, but it doesn't st stop me from trying um, and I think in this case, I'm thinking to myself that maybe I need to recheck the working length of this tooth. And and um, the, the, the problem with me taking the working length uh, straight away is that I didn't account for the sort of sclerosed or calcified nature of this, um, this, 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 uh, this canal. And um, essentially what I've done is I've checked, I've get the working length of 19.5, but once I've shaped this canal space, I've made the curve shorter, so that makes the working length shorter. So I'm gonna use a size 15 hand file. Again, using a size 15 is usually more accurate than a 10. And when we hook up the apex locator to the ML, and then we pull it out and we check the working length, it's seen to be 19 and not 19.5. So in this case, I've been shaving it 0.5 millimeters away from the actual working length, and this is what's been causing the bleeding. So what I wanna do now is I wanna correct the apical diameter on the mesolingual. I'm using a size 30 um, uh, uh, rotary file here, but it's got a narrow taper, so I'm not removing any more tooth tissue. And then um, I'm gonna I'm gonna shape this to 18.5 millimeters, and that's 0.5 millimeters from the new uh, zero reading. And then what I need to do is, of course, I need to make a custom cone uh, for the mesolingual. So I'm going to take a 25 here and I'm going to cut it to 30. And this hopefully is going to make sure the GP cone fits um, snugly at this new sort of apical diameter we've created. And now I'm just going to check everything. So I've snipped it. I've, I'm going to measure the GP cone uh, to 18.5 millimeters. And I'm going to just try and put this in the hole. But it, it's really, really difficult, especially with the bleeding. And um, what I wanna do is I just wanna get the GP uh, cone and the cone fit really graph done. I'm gonna worry about the bleeding later. And I'm just gonna uh, place more of the GP cones to length. And when we take the cone fit radio after, we can see here that all the GP cones at, are at the correct length. And, um, and what I wanna do now is once we've removed all the GP cones, we can see there's excessive bleeding in this canal space. And um, essentially, what I need to do now is just need to irrigate and activate and irrigate and activate and make sure that the uh, canal space is completely uh, dry, ready for obturation. What I would say, if you're using EDTA uh, whilst the canal space is actively bleeding, it's um, it's it arguably that makes it worse. So you want to make sure it stops bleeding completely before you uh, before you uh, use your EDTA to remove the smear layer. But you know, I aspirate and irrigate sodium hypochlorite for ages but in the end we get to the point where the uh, bleeding has been stemmed so once i feel like the uh, the, the bleeding has, has stopped um, significantly i'm ready for the paper point drying i'm going to sort of place a paper point in 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 the uh, in, in the mesolingual and the mesobuccal and the distal um I'll notice that when we put the paper point in the mesolingual, there is 
still bleeding associated with this canal space but it's much less than it was and essentially what you've got to do is you just got to keep pushing the paper point to length to dry the the the, the this mesolingual and we can see with each succession of each uh, uh, paper point the bleeding is getting less and less and less until we get to the point with our paper point and um, there's the, the bleeding has completely been stemmed, which is which is a bit of a relief. Again, if it doesn't ever stop, then you're gonna have to dress this tooth with non-setting calcium hydroxide and get the patient back in. And then we're ready to do our uh, obturation. I'm not gonna um, do too much on the obturation because there's plenty of videos that talk about how I obturate the tooth. But when we take the post-op radiograph, we can see here now, we've got a really, really nice obturation. Everything's been shaped nicely to length and all the obturations to length. And overall, you know, you live and learn, don't you? So you just need to be really, really mindful about taking working length checks with apex locator, especially if you've got quite sclerosed canals. You've got to make sure that, you know, um, when you take a, a, a working length check with an apex locator, in a in a, in, a, in a quite a curved and sclerosed canal, once you shape that curve out, you're going to make the working length shorter. Um, and you know in this case maybe the patient might get a bit of post-op pain but overall you know I've, I've spoke to this patient since and uh, they're, they're, they're fine and it's just one of those things and overall thanks for watching today if you have any criticisms if this has happened to you or you've got any questions please comment in the section below I love your comments and if you um, you know if you want to support the channel please please like and subscribe and if you want to take that support even further join the membership program we've got exclusive content and also uh, we've got uh, early access to content and i will see you in the next video next week bye bye